Welcome to Deep Americana. Hello, I'm Ray Carney with Deep Americana. Today I'm going to interview a married couple. They've been together for the past 20 years. And they'll be talking about Denver nightlife, their marriage, their experiences. Tim explains what shelving is in the music industry. Dane imp imparts the importance of wisdom, particularly in the media environment of the moment. Without further ado, I give you Tim and Dane. Cool. Where, where are you from, Dane? Uh, I was born and raised in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, moved to North Carolina, and I was the tie-dye guy in North Carolina <laughs> for about three years, two, three years. And so I was the resident hippie around High Point. High Point's like High Point, Greensboro, Winston-Salem. The, the, okay. The triad is what they call it. So Winston-Salem, that's where they burned witches way back in the day. No, no, no? that's no? That, okay. that's still in Massachusetts. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, Winston-Salem is where Haynes and uh, uh, R.J. Reynolds, mm -hmm. cigarettes, the Yeah. Okay, well, then I like it. Well, it's, <laughs> North Carolina in general is tobacco row. I mean, that's that's just, you know. Any, any time I've been there, it's North Carolina, Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, that's all tobacco row right there. Right on. You know, I mean, Virginia, right? that's all. Anyway, uh, about 23 years ago, uh, my mom, her husband, me, and my best friend, Ron, all decided to move out here. No jobs, no nothing. Mm -hmm. and my mom came out just after New Year's in 97 and uh, staked it out and we found a place in Westminster, and uh, she used her car, rented it, and we packed up all our shit, took three days to go across country, and here we are. And I met Tim about 20 years ago. Okay. Well, his best friend decided to come out with him. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Ron. Mm -hmm. And he was like family, and he just picked up right with him and left it all behind. Yeah. Right. Uh, his mom was... Really, uh, she was she was uh, kind of you know sick and tired of like the you know uh, uh, what was it the good old boys club or whatever you want to call it uh, yeah you know, yeah that's very much North Carolina uh, for you it really is and you know you know being a very independent woman she she was sick and tired of that she was tired of the racism and all kinds of other things and so she just wanted to get out of there and they were they moved out here and, and it's crazy too because back then I didn't really consider myself gay. Right. I, I was still trying to date girls and everything, and I um, I went through about a year in Westminster where I call it my blue sweat period. Okay. Where pretty much I'd go to work during the week, and then I'd come home on the weekend, and I'd just throw on blue sweats and just watch TV for Saturday and Sunday, and then just go right back to work. I just couldn't make any friends, and I couldn't get any dates, and I couldn't really hook up with anybody. Right. So... Finally, one day I just decided, I was like, you know what, I've been getting hit on so much by guys. Right. So I think I'll just give it a shot. Right on. So I went out and I actually went to a gay club and I found somebody and I hooked up. And, and like, how was that? It was, uh, it was eye-opening. <laughs> uh, right. No doubt about it. You know, it was definitely different. Uh, I had like moments and encounters, you know, from 18 on, you know, of, you know, with guys and right. having moments where it was like, you know, hey, just lay back and close your eyes. I'm just going to suck your dick. It's, it, it's, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> you know, right. that's happened more than once to me. Right. Uh, but this time I actually went out with the intent of getting with somebody. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that time I actually, you know, found myself sucking a dick. Right on. And there was a certain ick factor I had to get over. Right. You know, to where it was like, <coughs> okay, I don't know if I like this yet. Right. And little by little, it just kind of like came together and it felt right. And uh, I had my first boyfriend in like 98, 99, I guess, Billy. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very smart, uh, fairly successful. Okay. And... Uh, I was with him for almost a year. 
until he kind of said, you know, you should just move in with me. You know, he, he got into that let's build a nest kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I kind of had to face the fact that I loved him, but I wasn't in love with him. Right, right. It just, I, I didn't feel that as deeply for him as he did for me. Right. And I felt it was not right for me to keep doing that and basically using the situation. So I just said, well, I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to break up with you. And he cried, I cried. It was horrible. I mean, I felt well, so bad. Okay, so I got with a guy and I was with him for about, you know, seven, eight months and I had to break up with him because I couldn't give him what he wanted. Right on. Anyway, uh, about Wait, a year later... Can, can I interject? Please, please. So, so let, let me ask you, like, what time period was that, if, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, let's see. So this was around 98, 99. Uh, so... I remember pretty much the entire year of 1999, I was on my own. I wasn't with anybody. Right. But I would hook up with people. Well, how, like, to be in a relationship and to be openly gay in that time period, how was that? I mean, what, what like... Um, it wasn't bad. No, I mean, okay. you know, I didn't know this before I moved out here. Right, right, right. But Denver is a pretty liberal town uh, in general, and it's fairly well accepted, uh, it, it's only gotten better right on. Yeah, over yeah, the yeah. years yeah, yeah. you know um, I don't know I mean one thing I'll say is that I love where it is now I mean you know they're not right. beating up on gays anymore right <laughs> now like uh, in, in, in a reversal kind of that question if you were gay in the North in North Carolina and open about it is that somewhere you think you probably could have been beaten up at or something I, I guess, um Maybe I just asked to try to kind of probably come. more made fun of than actually beaten up. Right I don't really. Mm. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of gay bashing at that point. Right. Okay. You know, gay bashing was primarily an '80s kind of thing. Yeah, when okay. well, then you have that guy that was over there that like uh, he got he got shot in a bar because like you know oh, his goodness. his like his name was like gay and and he oh, like wow. I mean it was like as simple as that and he. Now, this guy felt, he felt insecure because his last name was Gay. Yep. And it that, caused issues, and he ended up getting shot. That's insane. Well, um, he, he ended up going into a bar and shooting. Oh, he shot them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I had the story reversed. But yeah. I just, okay. And this was, was in guy. Virginia. This was in Virginia. Well, that's where you're from. Yeah, but I moved from North Carolina, and I didn't come right. out to London. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I just know that when I met Tim, that changed everything. Awesome. Well, that, how long have you guys? How long have you guys been together, Tim? Twenty years. That's you know what? That is huge. Like most people that I know that get married, and most of them are gay, but most of them that get married, they might be married for you know three days, six months. So that's that's huge. That's a huge. Now, of course, job. we weren't married for twenty years because that wasn't allowed. But like, um, right when when. Eventually, when it was allowed, um, we didn't really feel that, you know, a huge rush to get married because... Not really. Um, we didn't figure anybody was going anywhere. Right. We'd been together for so long. And it had, because because it had been denied us, it kind of, it kind of cheapened it, in a sense. Right. We kind of lessened it. Well, well can, I, can, I, can I ask you, you know, you know like with, with marriage... Like, I had a, a, a person that I was in a relationship with for a decade, mm -hmm. and she wanted to get married every year. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not into things I'm told that I need to do in, in society. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, never got married. Mm -hmm. And one of the things in, in my mind, and I, I think it is great that, that uh, gay people can get married, but in my mind is, is that do we need to get married to be with someone the rest of our lives? What it comes down to is the protections that it affords you. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. The awesome. fact is, when you get married, there are over 1,100 laws that automatically come into play. Hmm. Things awesome. you don't even think about. Awesome. You know, if he gets hurt and goes to the hospital, mm -hmm. if we weren't married, I couldn't just walk into his room. Right. 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 If, okay. he, if I die and, you know, 
God forbid something happens and all of a sudden my stuff is just sitting there. You know, who's going to get my comic books? My parents? Right, no, right, right. He right, is right, because right. he's my husband. Right, right, right. There's tons of different ways that this affects everything. Right on. No, it's it's all it's awesome. Well, for the longest time, we didn't feel the need to, right. until it okay. came down to the point where he had a job where he could get insurance, but the only way that I could get on his insurance is if we were married. Right. Okay. Okay. So we finally went and got married. Okay. It wasn't a ceremony. It wasn't anything. We Did you guys over. just go to a courthouse, or we actually started out going to the Aurora courthouse, and they were like, "Well, two things." Number one, you have to have an appointment, and number two, it costs you 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. And, and we were like, oh, bummer. He said, or... Not that we didn't have 60, or, we were willing to pay 60 bucks. Right, we were willing to, but we didn't have an appointment. Right. Yeah, he right. said, or you can just go across the street on Alameda and to the DMV, and they'll marry you right there on the spot. Well, actually, they said that you can get the ball rolling. When we found out when we actually got there uh-huh. that you could self solemnize and you could actually just get the whole marriage thing, you know, just done. And so <laughs> that's what we did and and uh I actually had it right here. And it and it cost yeah. half that's the amount right. to boot. Thirty dollars. Cool. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so yep. The real story is how we met. Well how'd you meet? Well uh this was in February of uh 2000, mm-hmm. and I was with some friends at a candle party. <laughs> they don't even have those anymore. Yeah, what is that? A candle party is like a Tupperware party okay. from back in the 80s. Okay. Except you it's go there and they show you different candles. Okay. okay. And really the whole idea is just to go there and socialize. Right. right. They'll serve drinks, snacks, whatever. Right. And I went there because my friend from work said, hey, I've got a gay friend, maybe you guys should meet. So it's like a wine and cheese? Type yeah, like a wine and cheese like kind that? of thing. That's exactly okay. what it is. So I was like, okay, sure, why not? I'm single at that time. So I go to this candle party and I, I meet this other gay guy and we both realize within a span of like five seconds, no, they each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to work at all. It's like, it's like when you see two cats that don't like each other and all of a sudden uh, yeah, 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 yeah. they just rear up like, oh, to hell no. Hell yeah. And so we basically went to our different corners of the house. That's hilarious. And that's how the whole thing went. <laughs> right. I, I acknowledged his existence, he acknowledged mine, and that was it. Anyway, after the candle party was over, she suggested, hey, why don't we go to Tracks 2000 and just have some fun? Okay. I said, okay, sure, why not? I've been there a couple times before. Cool bar. It's a big, it's gone, well, it's moved now. But back then it was... Well, now it's just called Tracks. It's just called Tracks. It used to be called Tracks 2000. used to be called Tracks 2000. Uh, and it was huge. It was like, you know, upstairs, downstairs, outside. It was tons of different dance floors. It was huge. It was, it was a great place. It was three, there was three different dance floors on the bottom floor. Yeah. And... It was like one on the top floor there, and then one on the outside. Right, and one on the outside. It was huge. Anyway... As soon as we got there, everybody just scattered. Everybody just went to, you know, the four winds. And so I was just kind of alone. So I just kind of started walking around, and I was upstairs, and I looked up, and I saw Tim walking towards me. And I just stopped and froze and just stared at him. Because I'd never seen anybody so beautiful. It was just like, oh. That's awesome. My jaw just hit the floor. You have to imagine also, this was 20 years ago. We both looked very different. I mean, I was... We're all old. Yeah. Old, and old, fat, and happy. Yeah, old, fat, and happy. <laughs> That's okay. That's good. But Tim looked like a rock star. And in reality, he actually was a rock star at that oh, point. Shit. And um, so I saw him walking towards me, and I just kept staring. And he got closer and closer, and I just kept staring as he walked by me. And finally, he noticed I was staring at him. So we walked past each other a little bit, and then we both stopped and turned and just kind of regarded each other. Just, huh, what are you doing? Like two majestic animals acknowledging each other? Kind of, yes. Cool. That's exactly what it was. Cool, man. So at the exact same moment, we walked right up to each other, and I looked him dead in the eye, and I said, you know what? I've been looking for you. And he said, really? Because I've been looking for you, too. And he kissed me right there on the spot. That's beautiful. I didn't know him from Adam. 
He didn't know me from Adam. That's all right. Didn't know each other at all. But it just clicked. Cool. And we'd, mm-hmm. We've been together off and on, barring a couple of breakups or fights. Well. Ever since. Well, that's a relationship. It, wasn't, it is. It wasn't a couple breaks up, breakups. It was really one breakup. Yeah, it was just the one. You know. Um, and that was, you know, I had, um, I was uh, out on the East Coast and I was like seeking uh, record, record labels um, okay. to, get, to get, you know, signed and stuff. And I had a manager and um, he, you know, he had been in the industry for quite some time. His dad was... Um, was an assistant manager for the Beatles, and okay. um, so this guy, you know, he, he knew what he was doing, you know, and everything, and he had, you know, he had a huge, you know, mansion out in Florida, and he decided to take on my group. Um, tell, can, can I ask you, what, what, what were you, what kind of music, what were you guys doing? Well, it started out as acapella music. Okay, um, awesome. I started out in, you know, in, in high school, I started a group, and we had, a, we kind of had a rival group that, you know, they had been around for a while, and all of a sudden I came up and we started. But their group was was very, um, uh, it was kind of doo y and, uh, you know, excuse the term, white bread. Um, right. It was very just like, you know, like that. Right. right. Ours was very, the group that I started had very, very soulful music, and it was, you know, awesome. it was different. Um, this group was called and, Graffiti Tribe. Awesome. Right. And so... Uh, well, it wasn't Graffiti Tribe yet. Um, we were, um, what was it? I, I forgot the name of the, the other one. It was a long time ago. But, um, anyway, when I went away to college, and I uh, went to college to study uh, chemical engineering, and um, I was away in college, and I was, uh, I was doing somewhat, you know, not great, you know, um, and this opportunity came where they were like, well, you know, we're starting this group, blah, 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 you know, uh, we'd like to join your group, with, you know, with our, with the rival group, and we're going to, like, put the best two together and all this type of thing, pick the best out of each one, and put this group together. And that there was, you know, perhaps some interest from a record like that. So uh, we, we put it together, put everything together. Next thing you know, uh, we got attention from a record label. And I was like, well, I could put the college thing on hold because I'm not doing great right now, you know, <laughs> and I can always come back to it. And uh, it ended up like going on tour with the group and stuff, and uh, we eventually ended up getting signed. But it was a, at a time when... Uh, when uh, it was the end of the boy bands. When Warner... Right. Well, it wasn't the end of the boy bands. When Warner <laughs> um, was... was uh, they were merging with Time. It was going to become Time Warner. Right, right. And uh, they had what they called A and R agents back then, and um, it was like you know for artist development and stuff like that. You know, well, our A and R agent uh, basically got us to sign to shelve us so that we wouldn't be in competition with oh, anything wow. that they had. Mm-hmm. Right. And unbeknownst to us, that's you know that's we ended up signing and everything like that. They shelved us, didn't really do anything with us or anything. And so after that, we were constantly in search for another uh, record label after the terms of that contract. Had <coughs> and, and we actually met. We met right when all that stuff had ended. Yep. And there was like, you know, a big news that we were going to, you know, oh, we, we could probably get, you know, more record labels interested because we were selling around 120,000 units, you know, um, you know, within a year and so record label they got their attention they were like oh wow these guys are selling so much they may be good they may not be good but we could get a big piece of that action if we distributed right you know? so that's what they were thinking so anyway so we ended up going to Florida and uh, we were going up and down the east coast back and forth to New York and all this type of thing so we had a long distance relationship me and him that was horrible um, horrible and it like I was gone for a year and a half oh wow uh, you know, so I don't know how it kept it together. It put a big strain on you know on things, and that's when we ended up breaking up. We broke up for about a year, okay. and then uh, and then you know I I came back you know looking for him, and sure enough you know he had, he was you know looking for me too. So well, that's good. We got back together. So it's awesome. You know it was so strange because he actually introduced me to his friend so that I would have somebody to hang out with, mm-hmm. and pretty much. 
I ended up hanging out with that guy. And so, you know, then that just turned horrible and sour and awful. I wanted him to, I wanted him to keep him busy, not try to hook up with him. <laughs> right, okay. right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. wanted you, wanted I was like, to talk to I was like, yeah, to I was like, look out for him, blood, all this type of thing. Yeah. And uh, it was not good. This guy was my, he was my club buddy, and we were like, we thought we were, you know, good friends and everything like that. Um, <laughs> and then, and then uh, finding out that he was like actually trying to like make a move on things. So. And actually succeeded at it. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know, you know what, you know what. In, in life, man, it's all about learning. You know. You know it and, really is. It, 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 and we're all fucking human. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Well, and it's so crazy too because, you know, when me and the other guy had broken up, mm -hmm. I was just dying to find him. I was trying everything in my power to find to find him, which. I didn't know this, but at the same time, he was doing the same thing. He was What's trying to move. Beautiful? He was trying to move from New Jersey back to uh, uh, back to Colorado, mm -hmm. and I was getting clues. I, I talked to people who had seen him at bars and everything, and I knew I was getting close to him. And then one day, I got off work at a restaurant I worked at, and I was sitting at a bar watching a football game, mm -hmm. and I got a tap on my shoulder. And I turned around and it was Tim just standing there. And I fell off my bar stool and hit the ground and <laughs> was just flabbergasted. I was blown away. I was like, oh my God. And he said, hey, hey baby, let me help you up. And he reached down and gave me his hand and he lifted me up. And we've been together literally ever since then. Mm -hmm, that's I, mean, I mean, we didn't even question it really. Well, we didn't like, well, neither we did. one of us, neither one of us had, neither one of us had place yet or anything because I had just gotten back to yeah. New Jersey. I was staying with my parents. And so we would literally, because we both worked in, in uh, restaurants, for like we had all two these, months. We had all these friends yeah. that let us couch couch surf. Oh yeah. And so we just couch surfed just to stay together all this time. Finally I found one of my club buddies that he let us just stay at his place for like weeks on end until I got my um got got an apartment for us. But yeah, those were some interesting. Things. Well, that's a beautiful love story, guys. <laughs> it really is. It's amazing. Yeah, we made it happen. You know. Well, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. That's what I was gonna say. It's like any relationship, and I, I've had some rough relationships. My last one, I got my eye socket broke, my nose broke, and my ribs broke. Oh, oh God. And didn't know it had happened. And <laughs> so I'm like talking, like blood's coming out of it. So what I'm saying is, you know, relationships have their ups and downs. You know. Yeah, yeah. And it's good to be able to get through that. You know, believe me, I mean, we've had fights, you know, during our time. I mean, there's been well, that's knockdown. that's what relationship, that's what happens. I mean, there's been knockdown drag outs, you know. Well, and that happens. But yeah, we've maintained and, God, I think it's been a few years since we've had like an actual real bad fight. Mm -hmm. We just don't do that anymore. Mm -mm. We've just gotten to the point where, you know, we know each other so well that there's just no point in it. Well, there's that and... and the fact that we realize, you know, we're older, you could get hurt. <laughs> you know. Yeah, not, and it's not good to do that. My dumbass, <laughs> you know, yeah. usually what happen when you know we get in our cups a little bit, and I would just turn into Billy Badass for some stupid reason and start a fight, knowing, of course, that I'm going to get my ass kicked. I right. mean, right. I, right. I'm clearly not his size, well, right. so I mean, there's just no way I'm going to win that fight. But for some reason, I, you know, was the little mouth. Or, you know, the little but mouse usually, that wanted to roar. So I just wanted to roar. But generally, it wouldn't even come to those type of things. Usually, usually what it would come to is, if, if it seemed like we're starting to get physical, I would want to leave. And then Dang would want to try to keep me there. Right. And then I end up pushing him, which is the worst thing that you can do. You right. Can't, right. If you right. push somebody, they can fall. And then, right. then you, you can't control what happens to that person. Right, they right, fall. right, right. You know, and that's what's you, happened to me. Someone could bust their head. Yeah, that's and, exactly what's happened. That's happened to happen. me more yeah. than once. Yeah, that's yep. exactly right. what. You know. Oh, tr trust me, I've yeah. been in scenarios to where I pushed a, like a 350 pound man over, mm -hmm. you know, because we got it, which is mm -hmm. surprising because I'm about 150 pounds. <laughs> but. <laughs> It's a you running know, start. <laughs> yeah, oh man, yeah. I try not to get into in, into any of that type of stuff because I have a pretty hot temper myself. So. Mm -hmm. But in relationships, that's you know, just glad you guys could see that and have a badass relationship. Yeah. You know, 
you know, the good thing now is that I just feel like, you know, we're such a part of each other that, you know, I, I love when we can go to like a party or a bar or whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, we are in just that right mood where it's like, we are just a whirlwind. Like, I mean, you can't yeah. touch us. I mean, yeah. we are just so good at what we're doing at that point. Both of us have got our charm just cranked up to a high level yeah. to where we're finishing, you know, we're finishing each other's sentences and we're saying the right things at the right moment and it's like we're back in each other's play 100%. And it's awesome. just, it is, it, it's really awesome. Actually. I have never had a relationship like that in my life that was so fulfilling, to be honest, guys. Well, I'll yeah. tell you, one of the things that I've always kind of stuck by in my life at least is just that, you know, growing up, I never had uh, money never had fame, never had, you know, great chances or anything, but I've been lucky in the fact that I've always had love. You know, my, my mom was very loving, uh, although very stern. Uh, my, my grandmother was, she's just the heart of the universe yeah. to me. I mean, <laughs> awesome. my grandmother, I called her granny, but Lois Huddleston, she was just she an was angel. Living, she was a living angel. She really That's was. For sure. And I'm so thankful that she got to meet Tim before before she passed away. She passed away about six, seven years ago. And it was, uh, it was devastating. But anyway, yeah, I've always had love. And so, you know, I, I count my blessing that I've and been with immediate, Tim. And his immediate family, they accepted me, you know, right away. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, um, unlike my family, who, who um, I, I mean, I grew up, you know, very religious. Um, um, Plus, he's the seventh of seven kids. You know, Eight, ten. Youngest, you know. Um, but Seventh-day Adventists, uh, very, very strict. And unlike a lot of other denominations nowadays that are even more accepting of gays, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. even though uh, Seventh-day Adventists say that, you know, they, you know, somewhat accept the gays and everything like that, it's right, still right. one of those things where it's like, love the sinner, hate the sinner. Um, you know, and so there's still like, you know, the dogma still gets in the way from them actually being able to like see, you know, the people. Right. The scales right. haven't fallen from their eyes yet. Uh, right. With the right. Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so... There's uh, definitely some judgment there. So, you know, it's different. Uh, Hopefully we'll change. Yeah. So it was ma mainly my sisters that had a real issue. Um, you know, my, my brothers, they were great, you know, huh. but my sisters, um, well, I can't say sisters in general, I can't throw a blanket. I had one sister that wasn't, but my other two sisters um, yeah. had serious issues with, you know, with everything. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty tough. I, I bet. Just, it was pretty tough. I Especially bet. I know. my sister. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I know for, like, for myself, yeah. I mean, when I was growing up, uh, I was raised by a single mother who made $500 a month with a schizophrenic. I never went to the same school once or for a year before I went to college. Mm -hmm. I was raised by millionaire relatives, just, just tons of stuff like that. And uh, uh, with, with that, so I was raised by my mother, had very feminine qualities. Mm -hmm. And so that got, you know, pushed on me pretty, pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. Like I was raised in the fucking South, right? With a millionaire uncle that had a sixth grade education. <laughs> right, and so that's you didn't want to be the do the kid, you know, that's uh -huh. the boy, right? Uh -huh. like, that's somewhat feminine, or you know, like you just it just that, was, yeah, yeah. Your buddies are saying, oh, you know, he's he's you know he's gay. Blah, oh, my nickname was, was homosex. Yeah, okay. You know, but, yeah, oh yeah, and like so, I had those type of things projected, so I completely get it. Mm -hmm. In 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 my life, yeah, but it's yeah, you it's know. uh, it's uh, yeah. I, that, that's the attitudes that at, at this point in my life that I don't, I myself, uh, I really don't let be around me. Mm -hmm. Is attitudes of people that, that are like, well, it's this way or this way, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, to me, it's like, to me, all the problems we have right now are, are in these organizations of religion mm -hmm. and power, mm -hmm. you know? Like we lost Ruth, what was her name? Mater Ginsburg. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she, Gave a shit about all of this. And she gave us gay marriage, too. Well, she cared about all... She mm -hmm. understood that it doesn't matter what you want to do. As long as you're not hurting somebody. Right. 
You know what I mean? Everybody that yeah. the, that your nation, the government needs to <coughs> to accept you and embrace you as as a citizen, no matter what your creed, right. and background, no matter what. Okay, right. they're there to per, you know to provide that type of security, right. you know, for you. And uh, I mean, otherwise, why would you? Why would you? You know. Lend your patriotism towards a country that doesn't care for you. I'd rather move to a different country, you know. I, and, and I agree there, but I, but I also look, and I look at, and this will probably be frowned on, on how we look at people who are soldier, soldiers. Mm -hmm. We put them on a pedestal, mm -hmm. and it's like, wait a minute, no, they're going to go do a job for money. Just like I am, just like you are, and we're not being patriotic. And these people are being controlled. You know, you're being told what to do. It's not a decision to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. So much as it is, as you're told what you have to do there. I know a lot of people that came back from a lot of these wars. And it's just, it's, uh, it's, I think we really need to assess culturally a lot, just a lot of things, you know. I, and I, the way I see it, because I have a lot of military in my family. And, okay. And um, I see it as more that they, um, they're going. They're going there when when they when they enter into a war or or whatnot. I mean, it it's it starts it starts off as a job like like a lot of other jobs, but the exception is that they pledge you know uh, to defend the Constitution, which a lot of elected officials do. Okay? Right, right, right. And so when they go into it, whether they absolutely realize what it is that they're doing or not, I think most don't. You know. And that's a possibility. Yeah. Um, what they end up fighting for, and I think what they end up realizing and what gets instilled in them is that they're fighting for an idea. Right. Okay? And whether they, whether when they really signed up for it or not, um, I think it's still, in the long run, it ends up being honorable simply because whether they realize that that's what they're signing up for or not, they ended up fighting for it, and by, I guarantee by the end of it, they knew exactly what they were fighting for. Right. You know? And so, uh, I have you know, I have uh, uh, two brothers that are still in the military. Okay. Did um, they enjoy it? Yeah, they made a career out of it. Awesome. Well, I, I have a uh, I have a uh, cousin that was raised by that same uncle, mm -hmm. who was an ex chief of the navy. Okay. He's retired. He oh, wow. enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it is a different mindset, and. and and some and people are just made. Well, what's weird is like you know my two brothers, you know I mean, you know they're Puerto Ricans, but yet they're Republican, and I think it's mainly just because they're in the military. My my, my cousin, uh -huh. he is completely Latino American. Uh -huh. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm, I'm a white Native American, guy. and yeah, he's completely Republican. Too. And it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to now they don't support Trump at all. Oh, my um, cousin is so you know, into Trump. But um, really. Like, even after the whole thing came out that he calls most people in the military losers and Yeah, suckers, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. He doesn't believe it, does he? Um, I don't know how. There's such... I, 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 don't, under, I don't understand how you don't see that, but yeah. It's sad to me that there's a whole part of the country that is basically... Turned a blind eye. Turned a blind eye. I mean, well, uh, like, well, do you, do you guys, it's obvious it's right in front of them, but they were well, to believe you guys, it. Do you guys possible. think that this is just like these forced narratives? And I mean, I forced, think it is. forced narratives that we're pushed. I so, think it is. So I if we go back and we look at things, right, mm -hmm. we go back, we can look at MK Ultra, mm -hmm. which is where they first were testing LSD on mass population. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that spirals, and a lot of these things have a lot to do with marketing mm -hmm. that we don't, we don't understand. And it just, like, you can go in, okay. So, who did that? Who did the encounter? The CIA. Of course. And then let's fast forward. I mean, you can, you can hit Highway Ricky Ross, Ollie North, the cocaine contraband scandal, mm -hmm. and Reagan era. And that, that's, that's a little bit of these types of forced perceptions, mm -hmm. if, if you really look at that and, and how that played out. But it's, okay, so look at when we introduced crack cocaine mm -hmm. into the hoods, right? Knowingly, yeah. knowingly. Well, no, super knowingly, right? Mm -hmm. And so there was a 2020 special, right? Yep. By George W. Bush. And what was he the head of? The CIA. Yeah. Right? Which, Actually, you're wrong. It's George, George H. H. W. H. Bush. Oh, well, then I am wrong. Father. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. The senior, mm -hmm. I keep, I didn't mm -hmm. say. That's what I mean. And he uh, was the one doing the 2020 special. 
And I'll be damned if you go back and look at it, they say, crack cocaine, cheaper drug, lasts longer. Over and over throughout that broadcast, it was for sure an advertisement in a way. <laughs> well, if you go back and you look at advertising and things of that nature. Yeah, well, do you, do you know the story behind crack cocaine with Highway Ricky Ross? That repetition. I oh, don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the okay, story. Okay, so check White Boy Rick. White Boy Rick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so check this out. So he was a guy in New York, wasn't it? Chicago. Chicago. No, no. Detroit. 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 In the hood. Yeah. Okay. And White he, Boy Rick. He, uh, yeah. and, and, and at this time period, this is Reagan era, and this is when um, yeah, the, the Contra Wars were going over, going on, I forget exactly. In Nicaragua. Nicaragua, there you go. What, about what year, about 80? 85, yeah. 86, okay. somewhere in there. So, 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 I was still in Puerto Rico then, so there was like, there was some stuff that I was like, we were dealing with our own issues. Well, you know, most Americans at that point did not know what was actually going on. And, they, well, they hit and, it pretty well there at the CIA. Well, and Reagan came out and he's like, we are not blah, 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 mm -hmm. trading with terrorists. We would never do that or something to mm -hmm. that effect. Okay. So what was happening is, wasn't it that they had this general from the con of Nicaragua over here mm -hmm. dropping off cocaine to Highway Ricky Ross? Was it Noriega? No. Mm -hmm. Noriega was the one that was actually running Nicaragua at that time. Okay. Uh, and actually, no, I'm sorry, Manuel Noriega. Sorry, that's a different. Wasn't someone that worked? Manuel Noriega was in actually Panama. That's who Manuel Noriega. That's was. right. Okay. He's a former strongman in Panama. Right. And Nicaragua, they had, yeah, I remember this. Uh, they had the. El Chingon. They had the Contras. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> they had the Contras sending cocaine up to America right. for the money to actually back up their fight against the government down there. Mm -hmm. In essence, the whole. Iran Contra thing was trying to do a good thing. Mm -hmm. It was it was trying to sell weapons to Iran so they could give that money oh, to yeah. the Contra. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so whatever. No, uh, Highway Ricky Ross. Okay. He, uh, but the, the general is coming in there, and, and my big question within this is because, as far as I know, before that there wasn't crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where did that particular formula come up? It seems like it was, and I don't know this for a fact, but it seems like it was given to Highway Ricky Rod. They were fucking selling crack like it was a dry, like a McDonald's drive-through window. Sure. And they were making millions of dollars a day, and you had one of those generals or something bringing coke to Highway Ricky Ross. Yeah. When they busted Highway Ricky Ross, <clears throat> did they go up the chain? No, not at all. They busted him, laid it all on him. You know, which has happened many times. It's tons, tons. You know, and and so my point is that it, it's this whole everything that's happening right now is perception, one hundred percent. You have uh, portions of government that understand that you can influence things through the, through social media, the internet. There are black ops programs you can buy to have five, an account of five hundred different people. Like, let me lay this scenario out there. So I was reading about this company wanted to put a pipeline through town, right? A small town. Everybody's using social media. They know nobody wants to do it. And so they implement that type of program and slowly start building that company up, status quo-wise, with these people mm -hmm. so that everyone's going to agree at some point. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is very real stuff. And, and if you think about what we're talking about and apply that to right now, it's like, oh, shit, we have an opioid epidemic and, you know, mm -hmm. You know, there's heroin on the streets. How how is that exactly getting here? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, oops. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it, it it is it's all these different perceptions, but we also have to factor in, in my view, that the powers that be, fucking companies, mm -hmm. they know how to influence us. Mm -hmm. Sure. And and a lot of that's what's going on. They take in the college courses. They know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I have a degree in oil painting, right? And a lot of what I do is, is a lot of times is social media marketing. I help, I, uh, about 12 years ago, we, uh, we worked on a, a book called Art of Memetics, right? And I didn't write it. I helped talk about it with people that were writing it. And I made the cover for it, right? And it's, it's interesting, like I bring that book up. And then I think there's two or three other books published around the same time on the same subject. 
And then it fast forwards and like the military's publishing mimetic meme books, right? Sure. And it's like it's like hold on, what's what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And I, I what I think what I think it is is that our technology's gotten away from us. Mm -hmm. We don't realize the implications of a lot of things and what's healthy, and uh, we need to get back to. Hmm. Well, we've gotten to a point now, especially over the past year, where. What, there's a new term that they're thinking about putting in the... Uh, Could you tell them the mic? Yeah. There's a new term they're thinking about putting in the, uh, the dictionary. It's called doom scrolling. Oh, they should, they should, mm -hmm. they should. And doom scrolling is the idea that, you know, you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is you go through, you know, your feed and look at all the bad stuff that's happening. Well, maybe it should be called dopamine scrolling. Well, and I remember when, you know, Trump first got elected, I mean, the next day... I woke up and for the first like 20 seconds, it was like, uh, and then it was like, oh shit, you know, I mean, it was like, it, it felt like the world was caving in around right, us. Right, 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 right. And then we kind of figured out how to like take him to where it's like, okay, I'm not going nuts anymore. I'm just really, really sad all the time. And then COVID hit and he handled it like a five-year-old handles a popsicle <laughs> stick. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, Terrible. Jesus Christ. Terrible. I mean, then you come to find out that he knowingly handled it wrong. Right. He knew it was bad, well, dude, and he downplayed it anyway. Dude, do you not think that, like, when people are protesting African-American people, other minorities being fucking oppressed in this country, and then you get on TV, and i got to make some side notes to this point, but you get on TV and you quote the fucking KKK, that people aren't going to fucking throw some shit up and go fucking nuts. Side note is when he did that, yeah. it was like, he's so stupid. You know what What was going on when he did that? A law firm that had handled Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein's shit uh -huh. and his shit, because they were connected, of course, had gotten hacked and all that shit was coming out. Yeah. And so what it was is it was swaying perception so that you didn't, uh, so that you were focused on this other thing. And so... One, one of the things that I think that fucks a lot of people up right now is that we have, we have these conglomerate, bloated corporations, no matter what we talk about, and especially in our media, on any side of it that you look at. And so you are constantly bombarded with, like, with narratives and all this stuff, and do this and do this. And so it's like, okay, it, it just, it, to, to be able to see clearly through this, you have to be so, you know, you have had to have your paces in life, I think, you know, and you've had to have some experience and you have to do a little bit of research or just... Wisdom right. goes a long I'm way. I'm just an asshole. I'm like, I don't believe any of this shit right now, you know, but... Wisdom goes a long way. Yeah. You know, I mean... You have to be grounded, for and, sure. And, you know, the whole idea of wisdom is not knowing... It's, wisdom, not, wisdom is not necessarily knowing everything that there is to do. Right, it's, it's knowing you got to learn about shit. That's exactly right. Wisdom is the idea that I need to learn more about yeah. that. Or it's the idea that, okay, I know a lot about that, so now I can yeah. teach about that. Right. I can let people that have less experience and less wisdom know, this is what you're going to see when you go forward. Trust me, I've been there already. Right. That's wisdom. That's experience. Let, let, me, let me ask you guys this. So think about this. So we just talked about Highway Ricky Ross, right? Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, the Reagan shit that was going on, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I leave, Tim leaves, Dane leaves, and we go out and we ask somebody about what we're talking about, about that, most people will have no idea. Because they're too young. Not just because they're too young, but because a lot of people directly get their information from news sources. And yeah, like that scan, that stuff was barely covered. You have to be someone that is doing research and looking at things. Do you know what happened to the reporter that covered that? Suicide tag, man. He got shot twice in the back of the head. Sure. Really. Yeah, and so so when, and that that's the thing. I think that's where we're fucked up now too. Um, is that, I think that this stuff is all out in the open now, and I think that they are the powers that be on all levels have no idea what to do with it, and I think it's just like a swerve game half the time. Well, and I think what's really changed the game more than anything. What's that? It's just the fact that 
you know, you now have a president in office that knowingly does something. He tells you he's doing it. Right. And then he right. does it. Right. And then we turn around and say, wait a minute, why is he doing this? Well, you know what? He just told you he was going to do it. And now he's doing it. But, you know, I think it's also very much like... He's, like he's, he's broken back. all norms that are left. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, there are no norms yeah, left. Man, yeah, man, yeah. With, 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 the, with the invention and, and you, know, you know, the... The propagation of Facebook I, and well, everything. Well, yeah, all, yeah. All, this, all, all the social media and the internet and everything else, we, we've been able to all find groups that have that, you know, that somewhat... You know, kind of think alike. You know, yeah, or have yeah. some. It's all some about finding your own thing. echo chamber. Okay. Well, yeah. And they find their echo chamber, and it just like and it just goes on and on, and you know, and people never hear anything necessarily that that is that challenging to what it is that they think that they right. already know. Right, and I, I agree with you hundred percent on this and on that. And because they because they have that idea, they think that you know oh you know well. I have now. I have the knowledge. I've been educated. I know now. And then we stop. You know, and they're not. They've heard one side of things. Right. 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 Okay. Um, that is. That is. Usually, you know, has has a dissent on. You know, opposing opinions. Right. And uh, in any case. Right. <laughs> and then right. and and then on top of that, because of these echo chambers, you know. They end up getting each other riled up about it, uh, about it right. too, you know. And anything else that is challenging to what it is that they believe that they already know, right. Right. and um, and it, it didn't used to be that way. And I think that you know it's become more and more that way. But I think also we're starting to become aware of what it is that, you know, that we have been doing to ourselves. Right. You know, I think we're starting to you know realize the damage you know that we've actually caused ourselves by putting ourselves in, in these type of chambers. Yeah. And it's usually those very forward-thinking people that are doing that. Unfortunately, um, because those people may end up causing, you know, um, some of these bigger conglomerations or, um, you know, to mainly, like, you know, either lose money because of, like, uh, you know, the perpetuation of, of uh, forward-thinking, mm -hmm. of uh, understanding other people and everything like that, mm -hmm. that, you know, those type of people that stand out... Um, are actually being targeted, and no, they it, do end up. You you, know, you, you have um, to be you have you to be know. very care, careful with with all of right. that. Right. See, you know, one thing, especially now. Mm -hmm. One thing I've noticed is that you know I, I'll be the first to admit I am a, a very liberal person. You know mm -hmm. I have always been into politics. I follow mm -hmm. it. I read about it. Mm -hmm. I learn about it. You know I try I try to always see every angle that I can at least. Well, good. Um, and. I'll, I'll go ahead and admit that I typically will watch MSNBC okay. because I feel like they actually give the truth. They, they actually okay. say the truth. I'll at least, you know, once a day, a couple times a week or whatever, I'll jump over to Fox News. That's okay. That's, my, that's what my roommate does. So he has You should. Full, you he, should. So he has a full perspective. You should have an idea of what they're saying over there. Right, right, right. You shouldn't right. be blind to what's happening over there. No, because then you have no idea what's happening. Exactly. You get blindsided. All well, of a sudden, you know, they're getting all riled up about mm -hmm. something and you're like, what are they so pissed off about? Well, go over there and find out what they're so pissed off about. I just find it very hard. I mean, I'll do the, you know, I'll do well, I can only too, do it for like five but minutes before I can it just only makes me take take It makes so me much. It makes me ill. There's a really something really important, something that's really devastating to even like a large, you know, population. And when you turn over to uh, to Fox, then they will use all different types of fluff pieces to kind of cover. Yeah, they won't even touch that. it. Well, they're marketing. Yeah. They are straight and, up marketing to sway your opinion. And I'm like, whereas with MSNBC, I'm, like, I'm well, noticing that they actually are interested in giving you the news. Well, they I, give you the facts. Okay, but I would say more they than both once, market to you. They they both have they both have some marketing, but the thing is, is like what I've noticed the difference is is you know Fox is disgusting with MSNBC. <laughs> they are. they they will make corrections and they will apologize exactly. for their mistakes. Exactly, you know. That type of thing. I've never like, once seen Fox News apologize. We for made a mistake here, correction here, blah blah blah, and all this type of thing. Right. But now let's talk about how bad Trump is. You know, whereas like Fox, you know, they will not, they no, will not do yeah. any of that. They don't they apologize. Like, they don't apologize okay. for nothing. Well, 
all right. You know, so there there is some difference there. I don't know if you guys saw this, but CNN is you know usually right in the middle. Right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, uh, somebody was suing Tucker Carl. Tucker yeah, Carson. Yeah, I did see. I did see this. Yes, which and I think was brilliant. What they said. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> so yeah, they're suing Tucker Carlson because he apparently said this on one of his shows. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, mm -hmm. he said. Wait, defamation, defamation, wasn't it? Yeah, they were going after Tucker Carlson for defamation. Okay. And mm -hmm. oddly enough, he came out and made the argument that I'm not news. I'm opinion. Right. I'm not actually giving you factual news. Right. I'm just giving you my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it's like, then why the fuck are you here? What purpose do you possibly serve? We really, I, th I, think, I think the only reason he like don't call yourself a news man. news is because he's on Fox and they don't want to say it's a parody, which is what it should be called. That's exactly what it should be called. It should be called a parody or extreme it's, opinion. I, I, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this for myself. I don't identify with either side, period. But I like democratic democracy mm -hmm. far more than I do the Republican side. And the Republican side to me is out of completely out of control it's money based oh all of it and i guarantee none of those dudes give a shit about trump but he's paid them paid everybody so much you know look at uh mitch mcconnell look at Barr. look at these guys they <laughs> they've got to be have paid so much to pull these things that they pull. it's just disgusting well the crazy thing is is and that it, it, it's 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 is it's, that everybody you know, on the republican side does it out of fear everybody okay, on the yeah. democratic side does it out of an urge to raise everybody up. Okay, okay. They have a positive influence. They want to do something good for everybody. Okay. Whereas all the Republicans want to do is just scare the bejesus out of you. But they, it's almost to a fault. They want to just you scare know. you to the point where it's like, they're coming for your guns. They're coming for your daughters. They're coming for, you know, your sons. You're going to throw them in jail. They're, it's all fear. But... It's, that's all they. That's all they run on, and it's, it's not unhealthy. Just fear. It's not just fear. It's it's fear, power, and money. Yeah. Yeah. And no, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's a it's combination exactly of those. And the thing is, is um, the whole power aspect, the struggle to like maintain and keep power, has led them down a path to where it is that now they back themselves pretty much into a corner. They have, you realize where, like, no, they, they can't they, get. They, they, can't they get the only people. They want to get off this crazy ride, and they can't get off the crazy ride now. <laughs> that are doing decently well and then people that are immensely poor for some reason. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the people that do immensely well, like my cousin I said, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's a minority and he loves the, the stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. because they do display this, we say they're going to take their guns away. I said this the other day to somebody. I said, so they're going to take your guns away. They're going to go to every fucking house right. and take the gun away. Right. They're going to go in the hood and take six guns away from motherfuckers. No, yeah, not they're not. Right. You're fucking paranoid. You're right. buying into some shit. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, oh, just so much of it is. It is these goddamn narratives. Mm -hmm. It is. And I will wager, and I do like demo democracy. Mm -hmm. I Small D in democracy. That, and I like democratic people more, mm -hmm. way more, but... It just it's it's like it's like goddamn we have this technology right, it is out of control and there are people trying to control you with it, mm -hmm. and you have to use it as a fucking tool, and and ju it, it just get off that dopamine soapbox and really start to understand things and look at things and see see what it is. You know. <sighs> All right, you guys have anything you want to add? Well, I you, you know can. well I think that you know I think that. Um, that the religious right desperately wants to oh, I um, can't stand them. wants to not not associate themselves anymore um, with what the Republican Party has become. They can't help it, though. but they don't know how to now. They're stuck they're, in that bed. They yeah. They're now they're stuck. well, and, and they're and, eat and up with bed view, bugs too. And, I'll, <laughs> and I'll, I'll talk about this. Like I <clears throat> am fully against organized religion. Me too. Period. Me too. Because what has it done? It's gotten your kids raped. You know, the more it's killed more people than fucking COVID in history is religion, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Including people who thought differently. Mm -hmm. Mainly people who thought differently. Oh, yeah. And that's something that we can't afford to keep doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to learn how to love each other, not give a fuck about whatever, mm -hmm. and understand we're all human beings, and not just in our town or our country, but globally. Because if you look at it, the big problem right now 
and people get swept up in this narrative, like we need these resources over here. It's like, no, you know. But we understood that early in our country's history. We understood that, and we tried to have separation of church and state. No, we did. We did. You know, we, did. we understood we that. And well, then we absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yes, it does. And we then we started going and back to it, and we're like, you know how we could get all those votes. You know well, what? Religion's a great idea yep. because the thing is. But think about we were like we don't want to have religious we, we don't have religious or religious oppression anymore, yeah. but we're gonna have slaves. Yes, yeah. and so it just yeah. But it's, yeah, but like built. smart people that have had power for a while realize, and I have always realized that you know um, that religion can control the masses, right. yeah. and sure. if you yeah, can yeah, somehow yeah. harness that religion. You know, then you can also control the masses. Well, well, it you know, it, it's hand in hand. Have you ever, have you ever like researched or looked up the the, the Catholic Church's science, like fucking historical library that nobody gets to go in and look at? Yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't. Like, I there's haven't more history. Them, but yeah. there's more history to that than most countries have. Oh sure. About you know what I mean? And it's like, well, you know that I mean to this day, Vatican City is its own country. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I really don't. You can't step <laughs> in Vatican City without their permission. I mean, it's its own country. But, but the it has its own flag. It has its own... Yeah, yeah. But truthfully, that is what has controlled the masses right. since right. since time has been recorded. Since we have started... Since we've recorded time, right. religion has what... We used to... We used to basically, you know, as human beings, yeah, okay. just... We, we thrived on theocracy. Right. All governments had some, it was some form well, of theocracy. Right, until right. Until, uh, you know, eventually we started coming up with, like, you know, different types of, you know, uh, democracies and other, like, you know, you know different types of, uh, types of things. But, like, but for the most part, you know, it was, it was theocracy, you know, that, that you, rule. You know, it's amazing about humans and culture. That we, I don't like, I don't think we fully embrace just yet. Is like, so if you look at the industrial revolutions on two different continents, mm -hmm. not much communication. But these things happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you look at, I'm, and I'm going to say it wrong, I think it's the Creole, Creole, Creole grammatical structure, which is the beginning of every language on different continents. Mm -hmm. They're quite the same. And it's like, I feel like in today's day and age, we're missing so much shit that's just right here in front of us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. <sighs> you guys kick ass. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You do. You do. I may. I imagine you're like, this guy wants to talk about this shit. <laughs> Hold on. This is Tim and Dave, and we're signing off. Have a good evening. Well, if that wasn't the most romantic love story between two men I've ever heard in my life. I don't know what is. But thank you for tuning in and listening. Um, with that, this season is a wrap. We will catch you in season four. Be safe and remember, wear a mask. Peace out.